Hi, this is Phil at Simply Rhino, and today I'm going to take a look at some of the presentation enhancements in Rhino version 6. In the previous video, I looked at the significant speed improvements in the display pipeline, and now I want to look at some of the new display features. Firstly, all the display modes, in simple terms, look much better. All objects are drawn much more smoothly, points and control points are properly anti-aliased, and overall the new display is much easier on the eye. There's a new display mode called Arctic, and Arctic is great when you want to present an idea and be able to show the form and shape without involving finishes, materials and textures. Arctic uses ambient occlusion and a ground plane that by default snaps to the base of the object or objects being displayed. You can see that as I move the object around that the display regenerates quickly and like all the Rhino 6 display modes the display can be customized. The Arctic display is also really useful in an architectural context and can be used to produce very quick white plaster visuals. The pen display in version 6 is also much improved and now works correctly with block instances. If I just zoom into the balcony area here and I go to my blocks manager and I choose a new infill for the balcony. You can see that this updates and displays correctly. The rendered display has undergone significant improvements in version 6 and the default setting is now that of a typical product design studio setup. A 360 degree HDR image controls the global environment by default, meaning that at startup you have a predefined lighting and reflective environment solution. Once again the ground plane is set to automatically snap to the base of the model, although of course this can be changed. Materials have been significantly improved and simplified and there's now a large material library that is included with Rhino. I can either add materials from the materials panel or straight from the library. So I'm going to open up the library and I'm going to go to plastic and I'm just going to drag a grey opaque plastic onto this part of the model and you'll see that the material updates immediately and you can also now see some of the reflective environment. So I'll go ahead and add a few more materials. Once I've added the materials, these will appear in the material browser and I can then make some changes to, for example, color reflectivity and in this case the size of the speckle on the texture. Materials can now be applied on a per face basis, meaning that in this case if I want to show the top of the moulded logo as having a metallic finish then I don't need to separate out these faces and have a separate data set for rendering and production. I can simply sub-object select the top of these layers and then I can apply the material of my choice. So once again I'll import from the library, I'll choose metal, polished and polished chrome and I'll assign that to those objects and you can now see that the top of those letters now has the chrome finish. Decals have also been simplified and improved in version 6. If I go to Object Properties, I can add a decal to my rotary control here. I can choose the mapping style of the decal. And I can place this. If I want to make further changes to the scaling and orientation of the decal, I can right click on the decal and show the decal widget. And then if I just lock these two objects, 
I can select here now the decal widget and make any changes to the scaling and orientation of this that I wish. Material texture mapping and scaling is now much smarter in Rhino version 6 with pre-configured real size textures. Here I have a couple of walls that are 3 meters and 20 meters long respectively and if I drag uh, a brick texture onto these walls you'll see that not only does the texture map correctly and orient correctly but also that on the objects that are of a different size that the brick size remains constant. When we're in the rendered viewport we get a good idea of materials and textures and we can see a reflective environment but there's no apparent interaction between the objects. Here I would expect to see the orange body of the scraper reflected in the cylinder and I'd expect to see the cylinder reflected in the orange body. I'd also expect to see some interaction between this countersunk fastener and the orange body. This is where the new ray trace display mode comes in. The ray trace display mode is a live working viewport mode that has a progressive path ray tracer that gradually refines the image. By default the ray trace mode, which uses the cycles engine, is set to stop after 1000 passes but this can be changed and you may find that, for example, 500 passes are sufficient. Because light rays are calculated correctly, we can see proper transparency, translucency, reflections and refractions. Of course, due to the computationally intensive nature of ray tracing, the display can sometimes take a little time to calculate. So, in the options for cycles, we can set the maximum number of passes or samples that we want to take, and we can also choose whether we want to have CPU or GPU acceleration and if you have a good NVIDIA card with a large number of CUDA cores you will find that the GPU acceleration could be significantly faster than using your CPU. Perhaps the best way to show you just how easy it is to produce good quality ray traced visuals from Rhino is to start a new scene from scratch so let's switch to a new model. So here we are in a new file and I've just got five objects in the scene. I've got two glasses, two drinking stores and one volume of liquid. All of the parts here are modelled as watertight solids and Rhino 6 is at the default settings. So I'm going to switch to ray trace mode and from the materials browser I'm going to add a new material and I'm going to import this from the material library. I'll choose glass and clear glass. I'll pick the two glasses and I'll add the glass material to those objects. I'm going to now duplicate the glass material, change the name of this to water and I'm just going to lower the index of refraction to 1.33 and this will be a good representation for the moment of a water material. So I'll pick the liquid and assign the water material to the liquid. I'm going to go back into the glass material and I'm just going to increase that index of refraction to 1.8 just so the glass behaves a little bit more like crystal glass and this is going to just accentuate the refractions and the reflections give me a little bit more contrast. Then I'm just going to add in another two materials um, so I'll do the same as previous I'll just bring in one material and then duplicate that so I'll go to plastic and I'll choose a uh, navy blue opaque plastic change the name of this to blue and 
is change the color of this. And then I'll duplicate that material, change the name to orange, and of course change the color to orange. I'll then apply these materials to the drinking straws. And pretty much that's all I need to do to create my ray trace visual. If I wait for this to regenerate, you'll see that this gives me a really nice high quality result. And you'll see that my refractions are technically correct here. We can see the different refraction going into the water and how the refraction through the water and the glass behaves. So that's about all I wanted to cover in this video and we can see that presentation and rendering is much improved in version 6. Please feel free to leave any comments below and if you found this video useful please hit the like button. To keep up with the latest news on version 6 and other Rhino related topics please subscribe to this channel. Thanks very much for watching and I hope to catch up with you again soon in the next video.